Welcome to week three. This week is about more complex data types. The last week we introduced lists. This week we first start in our unit one with tuples or tuples. So what are tuples used for? Actually, they're quite similar to lists. And if you carefully look, basically from an optical point of view, they just use parentheses instead of square brackets. Typically, you use it for collecting certain kind of uh, attributes like an address consisting of zip code, seats, city, street and house number. However, there is one important difference compared to lists. Tuples are immutable. That means you cannot change the content of a tuple. You cannot add attributes, you cannot add elements or values, you cannot delete it and you cannot change the value of a certain attribute. What are basic operations on tuples? Tuples have an index, so you can access certain elements of a tuples like you do, exactly like you do in lists. You again use these square brackets for indexing, but uh, again you have only read access, you cannot write a new value into this uh, element. Subtuples can be Subtuples can be defined using the same type of slicing as has been introduced the last week. And you will learn in a later unit that the combination of lists and tuples can become very powerful. Showtime. As you remember, you are now best open your notebook and go into the Jupyter server and compare what we are doing right now in the notebook. As you can see, we're in notebook week three, unit one, which is about tuples. And as argued before, if you have a careful look on our first coding cell, you see we have a variable name, address, and we assign a tuple to it. Yeah, and again, the tuple always starts with a parenthesis it ends with the parentheses, so not the square brackets, but the round parentheses. And in there, you can add a number of elements, um, which can be of different data types. In here, you have typical values for an address, like a zip code, like a city name, like a street name, and like a telephone number. You see, first one is an integer, the rest one is strings. And if you simply run this, and you print out this address, you can see it's exactly um, as we have put it in there. Another example could be the student. Yeah, think of a university, you have lots of students to take care for, or you have to take care for the data of the students. And again, you can see we have defined a tuple, yeah, starting with a parenthesis. We have some strings indicating the name, and the first name, we have something like a student ID, we have the course where the student is immatriculated, we do have an email address and so on and so on. And in addition, we have our address, yeah, which we have had before. So what you can see here is we can have tuples inside tuples. That's the same as we have had in uh, lists before. So lists do not cannot only contain primitive data types, but actually complex data types as well. And in the end, you see somehow a ridiculous um, tuple with simply some values just to, demo just to demonstrate that you can even ca uh, have lists and tuples inside it. Yeah? Again, in the printout, you can see here we have the tuple containing another tuple like going onto here. And then you have these two open a closing parenthesis, which uh, close the two, these two tuples. There's one difference compared to lists. Tuples cannot be modified. So if you see, I run this uh, cell in here, we have one tua, I can print out just one element by indexing. However, if I try to 
enter a new value, you will see the tuple does not support item assignment. Yeah, I cannot change the value of a tuple. Now you can access certain elements yeah, using this index. Yeah, index 0, 1, 2 yeah, is A. Um, however, you cannot change it. That's what we call immutability. Uh, the tuple can't be modified. What you actually can do, uh, you can assign a new complete... You can, <coughs> what you actually can do, you can assign a complete new value, a complete new tuple to a variable. So what you see here is the variable t tab um, is assigned or gets, gets uh, the values of the tuple 1, 2, 3. Uh, you print it out. The result you can see here. And uh, in the next step, you assign a new tuple with more elements to it and you can um, print it out as well. So not to modify or immutability means uh, you cannot simply pick certain elements and uh, change them. You cannot delete an element. You cannot uh, enlarge the tuple by more elements. What are tuples used for? Yeah, so, we have seen two examples. Yeah, we have seen the address with zip code, city, street, house number. You could have a position in the map with an X or a Y coordinate, or you could have a date where you have a year and a month and a date. So, often you have structures, you have uh, something which is a little bit more complex than simply to use just one integer or just uh, one uh, string. So you need to compose more complex structures out of it. And here tuples are good to use. So what are basic operations on tuples? First one is simply to compose a new tuple out of existing values. So in here you could for example see um, we have several inputs and we, com we get this primitive input like name, first name, and we compose a new tuple out of it and print it out in the end. Uh, so I could do as follows. Enter your name. So my name is Jacobs. Enter your first name. It's Stefan. Enter your phone number. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and enter your age. Something like very old. Yeah, And now, now you can see it's uh, Jacob, Stefan, uh, all this information packed into one tuple. And as indicated before, you can use indexes, indices with tuples as well. So once again, you can see I have a tuple, this address. Yeah? I have uh, another tuple, this our student, which contains address. So again, we have a tuple in a tuple. And here you see this indexing. It should be familiar from last week. Last week we just used it with lists. Here we use it with, um, with uh, tuples. And what you can see, we can use this double indexing as well when you have tuples inside tuples. Yeah? So again, we go through it yeah? and you can see the result, not surprising. And again, this negative indexing works as well. So. Once again, yeah, let's have a look. Tuples are immutable. Yeah? A similar example to the one we have had in, on, on above. Here's an address. If you would like to move to another place, it is not possible to sh simply change one element out of the tuple. What kind of functions and methods work on uh, tuples? And how does slicing go? Basically, is just like uh, lists. If you run len tuple, this function len, you simply will get back the number of elements which are contained in this tuple. And if you run tuple.count, the method count on tuples, you simply get the number of elements given by the parameter x. And um, if you would like to get the index of the first element, which has a value x, you can do so as well, like in uh, with lists. Again, let's run this as an example. Yeah, in the first place, you see we have a numbers 
in this, our tuple, we have one, two, trois, four, um, this V and a six. If you simply do a slicing, it exactly works like the slicing in lists. Yeah? So we have the element with the index two, zero, one, two. Yeah? And the element with the index four is the first one which is not included, so the V is not part of it. Trois, four is our subtuple. Yeah? And the others, like the six, one and four, check for yourself, but actually it pretty, uh, works pretty fine. Um, uh, but actually it works in the same way as the lists do. We can use our for loop. Yeah. We have uh, learned the last week as well on tuples. Why? Tuples are sequences and for loops are well suited for running through tuples. So if you simply have a look on this uh, small code, you see again a tuple is defined. Yeah? We have our for loop running to, um, through our address yeah? and the address part is printed out. So what you can see here, all these items from the tuple are taken and printed. Finally, we have had in our first week these casting operators yeah, where you can, for example, cast a string into an integer and vice versa. The same is possible for the conversion of lists into tuples and tuples into lists. You simply use these uh, casting operators int and, t uh, sorry, you simply use this casting operator list to convert something into a list or tuple to convert something in a tuple. And again, if you run this code, you see we have defined a list. We convert it in a tuple printed out. You can see this parenthesis and then we convert it back using the list function into a list. You can see these square brackets which clearly sign its list. So, what have you learned so far? You have seen what tuples are, that there is a small difference compared to lists. You know why they are used to simply describe more complex objects, like for example an address. You see the, lists the differences between lists and tuples, which uh, you can... Uh, there is this main difference between lists and tuples, that is, lists are mutable, whereas tuples are immutable, they cannot be modified. And finally, there are a few basic operations, basically the same operations that we have on lists, as long as this tuple is not changed. See you in the next unit.